It's tabletop time, and I'm Dave. And over the past two and a half days, I have been building a tiny, tiny world. That's right, this project started when I looked at some awesomely cool tiles on my mini factory from a little group called Graven's Guild. I saw that this was from a Kickstarter that I missed out on backing, and as a DM, I was super enthralled with the concept of building tiny worlds out of these hex tiles that clip together. And that's when I began my journey into 3D printing a whole bunch of tiny hex tiles. It is time to take a look. Did it use nearly all the resin? Uh, that's, that's not that. good. Now resin is gross, so you don't want to get the... That's not good. Yeah. Yeah, so here we've run out of resin. I would describe that as buggered, screwed, salvageable. I could green stuff and fix that little corner. Mm. But yeah, it looks like we've lost these two tiles. But look, hey, we got two. We got two and a half. Sometimes that happens. Always fill your resin vats, people. But this is the problem with when you leave it overnight for ages. Like, you don't necessarily know. And it can be hard with a new printer. Hey, we'll do what we can. We'll make the best of it. Ah, fresh baked this morning. And now we let this dry because we don't want to cure it while the supports are still on. With my 3D prints cured, minus the one or two disasters, it was time to start crafting my world. I could place all these hex tiles down and work out how I wanted them to look. It was at this stage I wish I had a few more roads, a few more river tiles, a few more options, but we had what we had and I was going to make it work. Now I knew there were a few things I wanted. This video is thanks entirely to our mini club patron members who in our mini review, which we do monthly, uh, supported my push to have the hex tiles as a video that we'd create. So I want to thank them for that. But one of the things that they'll notice is that I'm building this to match the campaign map. In our previous battle report video, which you can check out in the description to this, we saw a lot of love. And that was just the start of what we plan on doing. That battle took place in a pass between two mountains. And I wanted to replicate that with my hex tiles. I also had some thoughts about areas of the map that would be used later in the campaign. But I'll get to that a little bit later. For now, it's just about blocking out these areas. I started with a mountain range to the north and then to the south, building out from that pass as the one constant thing I knew I wanted. Naturally, it ended up with me having a river to the northeast and a river to the southeast, which makes me feel that that's probably where Jazz's orcs come from. They're meant to come from a swamp, so there's a lot of water that way. I grabbed a couple of the Vallejo sprays. The dark spray I covered liberally across all of the hex tiles, but the lighter spray I sprayed only lightly and from particular angles, avoiding directly top down. This was so I could build up a natural earthy texture right off the bat without even having to get a paint pot out. With the pieces spray painted, I began to assemble the map again using the reference photo I had from when they were unpainted. I blocked the tiles into groups of four to seven pieces. This way I could roughly create regions and environmental differences between them, but also make sure that the patterns and colors I was painting across all the tiles blended seamlessly. The first section I worked on was the crossroads itself. This was the area where our battle had taken place and I knew it also functioned as a bit of a crossroads between the two environments I was thinking of in my head. We have the more sun bleached yellow wheat fields and dried grass to the west and the more river based green rolling hills and flowers to the east. Most of the painting I did on this project was actually done with sponges and stippling, two techniques that can be used to great effects on these kinds of tiny terrain pieces. Because of the incredibly small scale, you're trying to build up almost a texture of the multifaceted grasses, weeds and bushes that would be seen if you were close down to this surface. From up here and looking down at this scale, they generally appear to blur into more groups of colours that loosely blend across each other. And sponging is a really good way to get a natural effect without having to be too precise or deliberate with a paintbrush. I also sponged brown down the groove of all of the roads and then ran two thin broken lines of a dark brown through the center of these paths. This was to emulate cart or horse tracks that might travel down the roads. As the tiles were headed further west, I stippled blends of more and more yellow into the mix to emulate dry grass blowing in the breeze. Now, a lot of these tiles are covered in trees, and for these, it was a simple olive drab kind of green color with a dry brush of a brighter green and then a Athonian camo shade wash to blend down into the recesses and make me feel a little bit more at home in the tiny environment. Stones were just gray and 
cleaner wash. And buildings were painted leather brown with an Agrax Earthshade wash, and then a dry brush of leather brown back over the top. You see a lot of the painting techniques used on this are all about speed and efficiency. And it's one of the reasons I have always loved painting at small scales. You can achieve so much detail and so many really impressive effects at the eye level using really basic and easy techniques. This first batch of tiles was a really good sampler for a lot of the tiles on the rest of the field. We have a farm with haystacks as well as troughs for cattle. There's barns and buildings. There's even a mine. In practicing painting all of these elements in these first four tiles, I had a fairly good idea of what I'd be getting into for the rest of the build. So I think it needs to be said from Table Cup time that we are so thankful to all our mini patrons who've backed us so far and gotten us to where we are. And through your support and involvement, we're gonna be able to do even more and this is really the launch of that. Every tile on this map has the potential to represent an entire six foot by four foot gaming table that we can build for our campaign. We want this to be the world map of a series of crazy cool narrative battles that tie in story, audio book like short stories and battles in multiple game systems. So when you see these little tiles, I hope you can imagine the same lens I'm looking at them through. I'm imagining each tile and how that's going to fit into a wider game and a wider a story. There's a lot of little cues on them from the castle on the hill down to the water mills by the river. Each of them could be an incredibly cool gaming setup that we could play our games on. But the people deciding these battles, that's you. That's our patrons. We actually have a poll up right now and it's up for another week while this video is live. And that poll is choosing the next location that Jazz's Cruel Boys are going to be attacking in our narrative campaign. We are gonna be adding a whole bunch of new exciting content onto our mini Patreon. So I really hope you consider coming and joining out and diving in on this journey and helping guide the stories that we tell on this channel and the games we play and the terrain we make. One of the things I was very careful about when I was painting these models is ensuring that the blends between and the segments I was painting individually were quite crisp and clear. So to do this, once I was mostly finished painting a section, I would place the two regions side by side and then sponge or stipple over the gap between them at the same time, making sure the sponge was hitting both pieces at the same time. This ensured the blend was consistent between all the individual regions. There are a couple of spots to the west that I had to do a few different techniques, including stippling on greys and blacks, and then coming back over with the wheat colored yellow to clean it all up. I really enjoyed that the west side of this map came together with a much drier aesthetic. It feels like summer in the grasslands rather than maybe spring like we're traditionally used to seeing. Where while it's still full of life, that life is yellowed and maybe could use a drop of rain. In the realm of sunlight, I can see why that would happen quite frequently. I found painting the more vibrant tiles towards the east to be a bit more of a challenge. The greens I was grabbing and finding just weren't capturing me. It was actually a paint issue. For all the paints we have, you wouldn't think I'd be struggling to find one, but finding deep yet earthy greens that didn't feel alien or chemically or unnatural was really difficult. And I ended up leaning on blending a lot, but I still wasn't really satisfied with the variety of greens I had at my disposal. However, with multiple layers of stippling, I ended up being pretty happy with the effect, especially once I sponged on a tiny amount of yellow and red to simulate wildflowers. As the map started to take shape, actually piecing together the tiles became a difficulty of its own. Found some of the tiles being 3D printed had naturally warped in very minor ways and were rather begrudgingly going together. I was constantly worried about breaking things or snapping parts of the models off or even just rubbing away the paint while I put them together. And it made me think that when I print my own set for home for my D&D games, I might be going for the tabless but magneted option, which they come with pre made magnet holes in these hex tiles, which is pretty sweet. I feel like that's probably the go for me. Fiddling with the hex tabs, it's a good system for those who don't have the magnets, but it was more fiddly than I needed it to be. I recently got to have fun writing my very own fan story for the Age of Sigma universe. I wrote it for our patrons. It was just a little bit of, well, it was fan fiction. And Jazza asked me to narrate it like an audiobook, So I did that too. And that ended up going up as a patron exclusive. The gate crashed to the earth, ripped from its fastings by a hideous creature. Now the reason I mention it is because in that clip, I talk about a town called Glimmer Spring that is burnt down by the cruel boy Orox, led by Brag, Jazza's war boss. I needed to include that on my regional map. I painted this tile much like I had with the other ones, going for some terracotta roofs, as well as stone for some buildings but generally just a simple wood color for all of the palisade and all the buildings in the town. The main thing that sold the story of this being a sacked village was the weathering pigments I applied. Liberal amounts of charcoal and heavy smoke blacks to lay down the look that this town had not only been conquered and destroyed, but also 
burnt out, at least partially burnt out. I think the effect came out pretty well and the contrast between the burnt out buildings and the village that is actually an identical tile or very similar tile is quite obvious, which is good. I will say that the weathering pigments did fall off the small surfaces and soak down onto the base a little bit more than I had originally hoped for. So it wasn't quite as perfect as I wanted, but I was happy with it in the end. Another area I'd painted that was quite prominent was the rivers. There are two rivers running through this part of the map and I've not yet decided if they're going to be joined. I like the idea of one being a mountain runoff and one being more closely tied to the swampy areas of Bragg's. Oh boy, Oryx. So with these rivers, we had a bit of a back and forth talking about the best way to approach them. And ultimately it was settled that I would paint the Northern River a little bit more aqua or crystalline and also as if it had raging and rushing water. To do this, I painted it an aqua color, a deep green, and then I stippled on some brighter blues. Afterwards, I put a glossy Mod Podge on top to give it that sheen of water and then used snow technical effects to simulate the water rapids. These effects didn't come out as well at the tiny scale as they do when you're painting it on a larger scale model, but I still think they carried the look of white water rapids running down from a mountain. The Southern River was a more brackish affair. Inspired a little bit by rivers like the Murray River here in Australia, I wanted it to be quite a lot more brown, more mud and clay disturbed and less rapidly flowing. So I used the same base color, but then stippled in browns instead of aquas. Finally finishing off with that gloss Mod Podge to get that watery sheen. It was time to put all the pieces, all by regions I'd painted together and create one cohesive regional map. And it looked pretty damn sweet if I do say so myself. But there was one thing left, one tile off on the edge, the portal to another realm, a place of mystery and excitement. A sort of a waypoint or quest marker off the edge of the map that would make people excited to explore outwards and find it and see what was in between. So I painted this really cool portal tile, giving it purple and blue coloration similar to my Stormcast Eternals. I even included some glowing bright blue spots to simulate those luminescent mushrooms I put all over the bases of my models. I think this portal will sit deep in the twilight forests. It definitely travels to the realm of shadow, that's for sure. I should probably stop talking about all this Age of Sigma jargon. A lot of you probably don't know what it means. But if you'd like to find out more, definitely check out that battle report or maybe some of my videos about how I painted my Stormcast Eternals. I am so excited to see where this map takes us, where this campaign takes us, and where this journey takes us. And I'd love to hear, what is your favorite tile? Is it one of the simple ones with the little village houses, or maybe one of the farms? And you know what? Why not name them? I'm gonna take all the cool names that fit the setting. No, not the silly names. That people suggest for some of these tiles, and we're gonna incorporate them into our world. So if you're interested in becoming part of this campaign journey, and maybe you aren't able to support the mini Patreon, this is one little way that you can do it. Chuck the comments down there and tell me your favorite tile and what you think it should be called. I'm going to be reading pretty much all the comments, so I'm super stoked to see what you come up with. And in future videos and future battle reports, we may just be fighting at your family mill. But until then, thank you once again to the mini patrons. You have truly carried us to the place where we are able to do all the things that we've been talking about for the last six months. It's starting, it's happening now, but it is only just the beginning. So come on the journey with us and let's do it. Let's make some sweet battle reports and cool armies and heroic fights and yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah. I'm gonna kill Jazz's stinking Oryx. For Sigma! Still for Sigma. We're still, it's still for Sigma. It's still for Sigma.